Hey there, before we get started, I wanted to take a second to say that this video was brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end performance monitoring solution. If you like this video and want us to keep making more like this one, all you have to do is click on any of the links in the top right of this video to sign up for a free trial. That's it. We hope you enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you how you can create this animation using just CSS. When I'm creating animation using um, using a GIF online, what I always do is I right click and I click on GIF Scrubber. GIF Scrubber is a plugin that you can get through Chrome. It's pro You can probably get through Firefox also. When you click on GIF Scrubber, it will treat the GIF like a video. So then you can uh, slow it down and you can step through it extremely slowly to see exactly what, what's it doing. So in our case now, when we move this just a little bit, and when the heart comes active, you can see that you have this circle that happens. On the dribble, this is probably to show like a finger tap. But in our case, we're going to add it in also in the click. And then it loads out. So you can see, if you look at it again, there's a few stages. First, you have your just your heart. Then that gets pushed out. The circle comes in. You have your button here that is getting its, uh, getting its color filled in. But it's, it's fading in slowly with opacity. And you also have your word likes. And then you can see that our heart is now this color. The likes are the same color as the heart. And you have this kind of faded color then as the button. So the next thing we're going to do is going to hop on over the code pen. I'm going to get started recreating this with just CSS. This is the starting pen that we have. We have all the core elements that we need. We have our home icon. We have our circle. And then we have our, like, our word home. Uh, when we get this done for one icon, then we're going to move on to the other three icons. So it will look the exact same as the pen in the end. So I'm just going to go through quickly what we have here. We have a button here that's wrapping the SVG. SVG is quite basic. That's our path. We got a circle here. And then we have a span here for the word home. And then for our CSS, our CSS is essentially just taking away the default styles that the browser gives you. So we have border set to none and we're just aligning item center and all that good stuff. So now we're going to start working on the animation. Before I move on to the rest of our animation, I'd like to give a big shout out to the sponsors of this video, LogRocket. LogRocket is the front end application monitoring solution that allows you to see why your bugs are happening. And not just that your bugs are happening, but why you experience them. So you're going to experience your bugs just like your user. I know as many years working as a web developer, just trying to find out what exactly happened when your user did something used to be very, very difficult. But thanks to tools like LogRocket, we can. this is now a much easier process. So I really recommend checking the guys out. With this video, you're going to have a 14-day free trial link in the top-hand corner. So just check it out, see if you like it, and now we can get back to the animation. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the elements we do not want to see initially. So that is the circle and the home span element. So we can first target our span element. Now in the, in the original animation, the font size is quite big. So we can set our font size 1.5 REM. If you don't know REMs, it's, it's a really handy way to make your font sizes response to the different devices. In our case here, one REM is 16 pixels. So 1.5 is 16 divided by 2 plus 16, which is 24 pixels. Now we're going to set our color. Our color being here is the purple that we saw in the initial in the original animation for the home. Uh, should be purple. Yeah, there you go. And then we can set a font weight, which is 800, just to make it a little bit thicker. Now it, we don't want to see it initially, so we're going to set opacity. To zero we're gonna set our width to zero and so it won't overflow we're gonna set overflow to hidden now the next thing we want to hide is the circle and now on my SVG I actually have a class put on it of circle so I can do dot circle and I first for the circle since it comes from the middle and get it kind of expands we're gonna set the position absolute or we're going to set its position to absolute. We're going to set the left to 40%. And we're going to set the top to 40%. So that puts it kind of in the middle. If we look. 
so it's like roughly in the middle so then when we hover over it we can just add make it that bit bigger and then like above we're going to set the opacity to zero now we have all the elements in place we can start kind of working on getting the hover and the active states done so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on getting the circle to trigger when we hover over our button so you can see here that when the heart is being uh was it being hovered or made active or whatever it does this so what we're going to do now is we're going to just going to come down here we're going to do button colon hover you could also put it in here and do something like uh ampersand colon hover because we're using sas but um i'm just i just want to keep everything kind of separate so it's much clearer so on hover or on focus because you also want to include keyboard users what we're going to do is we're going to target our circle and we're going to put an animation on it we're going to call our animation when we make it called pulse how long and our and then we'll set it to ease so now we can see how we can do this because at the moment nothing will be happening as you can see so what i want to do is we're going to set zero percent so what do i want my animation to look at zero percent we can do a transform and to make the circle bigger we're just going to scale it so we're going to set scale initially to zero and then we're going to set opacity to um, 0 0.2 because remember we set the circle to zero opacity so we can't see it and now we still have you can kind of just see the circle a little bit coming up there but we're going to continue so at 50 percent we can just copy these guys here bring them down we want the scale to be four opacity to be 0 0.5 and then finally at 100 percent we're going to put the scale or the the transform scale to eight and opacity is not actually going to go higher it's going to go lower and now the reason i'm doing this is because if you look at this one when the circle comes in the opacity actually goes from like really low to kind of medium and then back to low so that's uh what we're doing here and we're just going to do this and this time our scale will be eight i'm just going to save that so formats and now you can see we have that circle animation and uh yeah we don't have the right colors we're not going to get into that but i'm sure that was a lot easier than you thought it was going to be it certainly was a lot easier than i thought it was going to be when i first saw it but if you just think things through and exactly what's happening and just fo focus on the one element it makes creating these animations much easier like you saw when we were stepping through with the GIF scrubber that um, I mentioned the different parts. So now I'm recreating these animations. I just think of the different parts. So I knew I had to do the circle. I know I'm going to have to do the width on the button. There's fading in happening. And when we look at it overall, it looks like very complicated. But when you actually just break it down into the, the different parts, it's actually much easier to do. So now we can move on to focusing on the button and getting our colors in. So now we're going to focus on getting the colors right for our circle coming out, for the background color, and for the color of our SVG here. The, the icon really, or the button really consists of only two colors for each one. It's your span color here and your background color. So what we can do is, since we're going to be using, like since we're going to have four icons, we can create a mixing. Now if you haven't used mixins before, they behave similar to functions in JavaScript or whatever language you use. Our mixing is actually going to take two arguments. One we're going to call background color, and the other argument is going to be the span color, which I think are descriptive variable names. And then you can do background is going to be you probably guessed it background color. And then you want to focus in on our span. Our span is going to be the span color. And then our circle which it comes out remember our circle is an svg with a class circle and then inside the svg we actually have a circle element so we can set the stroke of our circle element to be this band color so what we've done here is we've taken care of the background color the and the color of the circle and the color of the word we also need to set the color for this guy we're not including that in the mixing as sometimes with svg is going to be on the stroke other times it's going to be on the fill 
So really no way of knowing it's going to be on a case by case basis. So what I want to do is we want to set a hover for our home. So above, if you look at our button here, we have a we have class home. So in dot home hover and also focus for keyboard users. And then we will include or include include our mixing, which is called icon colors. And now remember, we are taking in two arguments. Now I know the two colors are the two hex values. So I'm just gonna pop those guys in. So it's these two. So that is for this color. So the background is this and the other color is this. So now if we hover over, you can see we have a background here and we have a circuit coming out. The next thing we need to do is for the icon here. So on the home, it's a path and it's a stroke and the stroke is going to be the same as the span as the span color hey there it's me again just wanted to take a second to say that this video is brought to you by log rocket a front-end performance monitoring solution if you like this video and would like us to keep doing ones like it all you have to do is click on any of the links in the top right of this video to sign up for a free trial that's it we hope you enjoy the video and we'll just put in our hash. And I'm also going to do a transition all 0 0.5. And he's just so it kind of fades in a little bit. Yeah, that is perfect. Now, then what we need to do is we need to get the width also working. So we we'll just head down to a button hover. So when our button is hovered, we need to add a bit of width to our span and also some opacity with 120 px so now if you hover over it okay that's not too bad but um you can see in our gif scrubber it kind of like maybe if we can go back i'll just go on to the next icon you can see the width kind of animates a little bit so what we can do is we can head up to a button here and we go to our span element and what we need to do is we need to do transition and now we want transition happening in opacity in the width so we can just use all we'll set it to maybe 0 0.5 s and ease okay that's a little bit slow so maybe 0 0.3 Okay, still a little bit slow, so maybe 0 0.2. Okay, cool. That is essentially one of our buttons done. And I bet you that was a lot easier than you thought it was going to be. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on adding in other icons and getting the transitions or the animation also done for them. So now it is time to add in our other buttons. So all these guys, I have created SVGs for each one. So I'm just gonna copy and paste them in. Each one is also um also wrapped with a button with a with a super class name. So I'm just gonna pop them in here. Okay, cool. That that went smooth. Uh, you can kind of see that we all, we're going to want to wrap them in a div. So you can call it div whatever. I'm going to call mine bar because it's like a bar of buttons. And then we can just end the div down here. And we can do this really quickly. We can just do dot bar. We can do display flex. and cool so you can see already it's actually it's looking a bit mad but it's actually not looking that bad so we the width seems to be going the button seems to be moving because we've done a lot of the groundwork already so i'm just going to close everything up so we can focus in on what we want to do so i think first the second thing in line is the likes button so we're just going to do dot likes on hover and again 
on focus we're going to include our mixing which is called icon colors and then we're going to include the two hex values for this guy and then like uh like above for home button we're gonna instead of targeting the fill or instead of targeting the stroke this time we're gonna target the fill with the span color which is this guy and then we're gonna do like above transition all and I know you're probably thinking we're kind of repeating ourselves here but it's just because on some of these SVGs we're targeting the fill and others we're targeting the stroke if they were all stroke we could include them in our in our mixing so I think everything looks good and valid CSS include I, I oh, okay very easy to make typos thankfully code pen let us know so I should have put an at symbol in there for include okay so likes nice okay now we can move on to doing the find icon so again that has a class of find focus on the hover and then we always want to focus on the focus so i'm actually just going to copy and paste what i have above and just change in the hex value so even though hover over the find now you can see it has the same colors as this so for find for the two hex values we want these guys and then we also want this guy and this is also fill okay okay so you can see since we did so much groundwork with our mixing and setting everything up these ones are actually much easier and then finally we just have to do our profile so like above i'm going to literally copy this uh change this to profile change this to profile get in our hex colors in here and in here i uh, get our span which goes here this is also on the fill and that profile colon focus that profile and da -da. oh yeah we have two brackets here cool and if you hover and as you can see we've got the we've got everything done now so i think today was really a good example of how like i think we've probably done this in 20 minutes it just shows how quickly you can get this done because when you initially look at it through the gift scrub it might look a little bit intimidating but it's really actually not that bad uh, the main takeaways i would have today or the one main takeaway i would like to really put out is that when you were creating animations to just step through extremely slowly use gift scrub it's a great tool and just see all the different states i think this even applies to programming in general that when we're writing a function or we're building a feature out you can become very overwhelmed with everything it needs to do but if you just focus on like the mvp or the main things you want to get done do each one of those as best as you can like lay each brick as best as you can and at the end of the day you will come out with the, it looking absolutely great and you won't get too much in your own head because i know sometimes when i'm doing the animations if i look at the thing just overall it become very intimidating but when you actually break it down into the steps you you're going to have all the css fundamentals you need in order to create it so if you take away anything from this video i really hope it is that that you can break all these animations down and they're not so 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 intimidating as you think they are so i really hope you will take that away today and have a really good day i'm going to include the starter pen and the complete pen in the description thanks again to log rock for sponsoring this video and i hope you have a great day